by 1303. Moscow controlled land that encompassed the entire flow of the Moskva River. Its ambitions didn't end there. Moscow continued to expand its borders through its wealth rather than warfare. Its tactic was to buy land from bankrupt rulers, acquiring entire towns and villages in the process. As Moscow was still a vassal of the mighty Mongol Empire, it had to send envoys to pay them tribute. And Moscow's ever-expanding borders meant more and more revenue for the Mongols. But not everyone was content with the rise of Moscow. As Moscow grew in power and influence, its grand prince, Dmitry Ivanovich, reinforced its vulnerable defenses. Its wooden fortress, the Kremlin, was rebuilt. This time, in stone. But even stone walls didn't deter its enemies. By 1368, Lithuania saw rapidly expanding Moscow as a real threat. Joining forces with the Principality of Tver, they set out to challenge its dominance. They attacked Moscow. But the stone walls held, and the enemy retreated. Tension between the factions refused to die down. In 1370, Moscow marched on territories belonging to both Tver and Lithuania, igniting a full-blown war. Years of bloody conflict ensued, until Moscow's Grand Prince Dmitry Ivanovich finally defeated both enemies. Yet Moscow was still a vassal of the Mongol Empire, which still demanded tribute. Moscow must keep up the payments, or face retribution. Trade routes between Rus settlements supported a vibrant economy, which in turn allowed Moscow to pay forward tribute to the Golden Horde. If Moscow was to avoid a Mongol attack, Dmitri would have to meet the Horde's tribute demands before the Khan's patience expired. <laughs> Moscow's primary means of raising the taxes demanded by the Horde was through trade with nearby Rus towns. But Prince Dmitri would have to keep his traders safe from raids by opportunistic bandits that stalked the countryside. While Moscow's trade was strong, Dmitri could bolster his income if he could locate additional trade partners. Ah, 
Наказан след. Радуйся. Слушайте, грядите в путь. Ревник готов есть. Позоротай готов есть. Скачу, куда велено есть. Позоротай готов есть. Двигаюся. Сделаю. Нападаю! Лихо есть! Ревник готов есть. Слушайте. Начну трудитесь. И спа... Делаю, что велено есть. Грядите. Гадьте чем? Люди... Ну, скоро люди. Слушайте. Уразумею. Стоп. 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 Радуйся. Начну трудитесь. Приуготовляйтесь все. Без сомнения. Позоротай готов есть. Направляюсь. Всадь хорошо. Следую приказам. Иду Trade routes brought wealth, but safe passage was not a given with bandits stalking the roads. Increasing Moscow's income required locating additional trade partners. To do so, the Muscovites needed to scout the land in search of new settlements. When Dmitri's men located Vladimir, they opened another revenue stream for the Grand Prince. But more traders on the roads meant an increased threat of bandit raids. Kerislev welcomed Dmitri's envoys and the coming of Muscovite traders. Muscovite scouts located the town of Sustel and trade could begin. As the deadline for payment of tribute approached, Dmitri had to quicken his efforts to collect the necessary taxes. 
построено будет. Возрождай готов. Слушайте. Golden Horde paid, the Muscovites could concentrate on expanding their territory until the next payment was due. The small settlement at Pereslav welcomed Muscovite scouts and the prospect of trade. As Moscow grew in riches, the Khan continued to demand taxes. If Dmitri did not pay, he would face the swift vengeance of the Horde. As Prince Dmitri sought to increase Moscow's power, he turned from trading with his neighbors to purchasing their lands outright. If he owned the surrounding lands, Moscow would be the dominant center of Rus' power, and Dmitri would be secure as Grand Prince. Пусть! Разрушаю тебя! Повинуюсь! 
Приближайтесь, боязливые! Радуйся! Труждайте на земле, я прекратите. Приуготовляйтесь все. Начну трудитесь. Дело есть. Чего делать надо много? Moscow's power grew as it absorbed the lands around Kolumna. The town would now generate gold without the need for taxing traders. Внемлите на газ, грядите в путь. Бой, надо есть. Before he could purchase the settlements, Dmitri needed to prove he could provide safe passage for the traders and their goods. Приходите, воины! 
делать это сделаем сейчас. Сбираю древеса. The Khan once again demanded taxes from the growing Rus provinces. But this time, the price to keep the horde at bay was higher than ever before. Dmitry purchased the lands of Troitsky and extended Moscow's power. Я колбонный. Накази следую наказать. Ворог блин стоит! 
Идти надо на помалку. Что есть труп? Слушай. With an exchange of gold, Dimitri secured the loyalty of the rulers of Kerisler. Bandits remained a threat on the roads, however.
Слушайте на Каков наказ есть? Слушайте! Сделано есть. Слушай, на капреж по скору. Сделано будет. Следую наказу. Слушаюсь. Как его понял. Прямулись мы! Сокрушают! Двигаемся, панца! Приготовляйтесь, панца! Брат, войне. Вой, ладно, есть. Идите. Ну, слушаюсь. Жаловайтесь, нельзя. Как жаловайтесь, нельзя. Oh, 
Пока идти надо на помолу. Что есть трудного? Слушай, нам жаловать еще нельзя. Слушай, кисти. With the gold he had raised, Dmitry purchased Paraslav outright. <laughs> Vladimir became another outpost of Moscow's growing influence. Moscow's power over the region was now secure. With the surrounding principalities under Dmitry's sway, Moscow was now the preeminent power among the Rus. The time was coming to throw off the Mongol yoke.